I've been a policeman for 24 years in Vancouver. I've spent my entire career, with a few exceptions, uh, in drug enforcement, and I've never seen a crisis that is this bad. I started my career in the downtown east side in Vancouver in 1996. That was during British Columbia's first drug overdose crisis. And back then, there was no harm reduction and a lot of enforcement. When I was just about to leave the downtown east side to go on to another assignment in the drug squad in 2001, uh, things like needle exchanges were starting to appear. There was a lot of talk about insight coming online in the downtown east side, and I was against that just because I thought the easy way out was to arrest everybody. And when I came back to the downtown east side in 2011, uh, there were all sorts of harm reduction uh, initiatives that had taken place, like uh, needle exchanges, insight had been around, and the one thing I noticed right away was I wasn't going from overdose to overdose. I wasn't spending my entire shift responding to overdoses. I think I needed to see harm reduction work, and that changed my mind. Last year, we had over 1,500 people die in BC from overdose deaths. It's taken a crisis to show that our drug policy doesn't work. It's taken a crisis to show that we need to change. Tomorrow, for me, would be providing safe supply to people that need it. Tomorrow, to me, would mean that nobody got arrested for being addicted to drugs. I felt really alone <laughs> in this world of uh, law enforcement, but I can tell you that over the years, as this crisis has spread across North America, I'm not the only policeman that feels this way. Law enforcement agencies from outside of Vancouver come here, and 10 months later, they give me a phone call back because they've had a chance to absorb what they've seen and the drug crisis is starting to affect their jurisdiction. And then the light bulb goes off in their head. If, if you want to house people and pay a lot of money, the two best places to do that are emergency rooms and jails. If you're paying 32 cents for a hydromorphone pill to give to somebody, that's much more cost effective than paying thousands of dollars to replace the broken window of the car that they smashed and have two policemen go arrest that person and put them in jail. If we treat this collectively as a healthcare issue, we're gonna keep people alive. We're also gonna lower crime because we're not gonna force people to commit crime in order to get treatment. So this is a win-win for society. The police can't arrest our way out of this, and we also can't solve it by ourselves. You know, let's not wait until it's your child or until it's my child that becomes involved and then it's too late. <laughs>